Hi there, welcome back. Let's jump straight into it. I've recently been working on this environment concept, so blocking out a scene, and I found that I wanted to create duplicates and arrays of this scaffold collection here. So I've got this, this is the full collection, and I found that I wanted to place these collections in specific spots, and I also wanted them to be one single object to be easy to manage. So I thought I'd talk about this because I set up a simple geometry node setup where I could easily instance a bunch of different collections all in one object and create things like arrays and change the orientation of things all from a familiar and easy to use method in edit mode. So let's jump over to a separate scene now where I've pulled in this collection. So let's quickly talk about why I'm taking this approach as opposed to some traditional methods inside Blender. So there's a few ways by default that Blender can instance a collection. In the viewport, you can shift a collection instance and select the collection, and here it is. We can move around, we can duplicate it, and then shift R to repeat last action. This is a totally valid way of instancing a collection. It does have its drawbacks though. For example, I can't apply any modifiers to this, and it's all in a bunch of separate objects. So let's go to the Geometry Nodes workspace, and we'll set up something basic and talk about a few more drawbacks. So we'll hit this drop down and press G to enter Geo Nodes, make a new one. So let's search for Instance on Points, drag out this and type in Collection and get Collection Info, select my scaffold. And so at the moment we're seeing in edit mode, we've got our points here and our instances are over here. And that's because of the position of this collection relative to the world origin. So if I move that over world origin, you'll see now it's further to the points. Alternatively, I can drag in this collection, put my 3D cursor on the bottom, and I've got a shortcut to apply the origin to 3D cursor. And again, we can see that now being aligned. The only problem with that approach is number one, I do have the ability to array this now, but you can see nothing showing up. And that's because in the actual geometry nodes, I need to realize instances. So now the array works, but you can see it's only arraying mesh information, it's not including any lights. So if you wanted to have a light in the collection, then you couldn't do so. So that rules that out. The other downside is anytime I want to move this collection somewhere else, I would then have to drag it in, reposition the origin to have it work each time. So I really wanted to have that functionality of being able to include lights in collections and also being able to instance unrealized objects. So on this plane, I need to compensate for that collection's offset relative to the world origin. So the solution I came up with was, in the collection itself, I like to put an empty somewhere, somewhere I want the origin to be. And then back in my geometry node setup, I'll search for object info, and then I'll get a set position node. I'll grab the location and put that into position and select the empty. And so we'll see a change happen there, right? So now it's offsetting it based on this empties relation to world origin. And I just need to reverse that transform. So a simple way to counteract that is get a bank to math node, set it to multiply, click and drag down and hit minus one. So it's always gonna offset the position relative to where this empty is. So if I select this whole collection and I ever needed to move it, I would now no longer have to reset the position. So that's really handy. It also means that if you ever needed to easily reset the origin or placement of the instances that you were spawning, you could edit that super easily. So I've got this set up here and already this has some nice functionality. Let's say I scale this up and go subdivide, subdivide. Really good for making grid arrays, or if you wanted to, just a simple array like this. Let's add a little bit more functionality to this. So I've just got these two verts here and here. And what I wanna be able to do is when I move this around, when I rotate it, I want the orientation to rotate as well. So from this group input, I'm gonna search for mesh to curve, and then we'll go curve to points. And so far we've got a setup that is kind of like a nice array got a count here so we can change the amount and we can change that between count and length set that to say eight meters so by length is going to be a set distance so i can dynamically change the length and the spacing will be the same but count is a set count and it's going to spread those across the line so the reason i used a curve to points is because i can drag out this normal now and type in a line and we'll select a line rotation to vector into the vector input and then I'll run that into rotation. Might have to select a certain orientation for this to work. And now when I move this line around the collections are actually rotating with it. So if I wanted to be able to duplicate something like this around I could set the count to one and let's just make this mesh line nice and small and essentially I could grab this and in edit mode copy it shift R for last action could copy it again and rotate it and have one object that allowed me to put that collection anywhere I want so here's the power of that setup here I could include anything I wanted at all 
in these collections, including lights. And I wouldn't have to manage linked objects for anything here, and it would all dynamically update. So let's turn what we have into something usable that we can save out as an asset to use with any other collection. Well, firstly, the last bit of functionality I'd like to add is to make this a little bit more user-friendly with arrays. So I can do mesh lines like this and have the orientation work as intended. So you'll see there's a bit of curvature here. So to counteract that before the curve to points, I'm just going to run a billet curve, set that to poly, and we'll just do like a bevel count of like something silly, like 32 with a tiny distance. And now the alignment is much, much nicer. So if you wanted to make some kind of wall asset that was using a collection or even just a single object, right? You can just change this to object info and do a single object, it's up to you. Uh, but the nice thing again about this being part of a collection is I can come in here, grab this empty to edit the origin point. I'm just gonna move this on the Y so that this overlap here is a bit nicer. And I might have to tweak these distances as well. But once you have it set, it's kind of ready to go. Another functionality I'd like to add is that sometimes the lights are spawning on the wrong side. So I want the option to be able to flip that. So I'll just put in a transform geometry for that instance on points. And I can just rotate that 180 on the Z and then I'll flip it around. So let's turn this into a tool. What controls would I want to have? Well, I want to control whether this is set to count or length. So for that, I'm going to search for switch, menu switch, plug count into A, length into B, and run that into my points. I can select this menu switch, and if I go to node, I can rename these. So count and length. And lastly, I'll drag this drop down option out and type in group, set that to a group input so I can choose between count and length. Now you notice that the correct orientation is only happening when I've set this to length, and that's because that's the one that has the normal output. So if I look for a vector math node set to add. I can just add those together. It's not actually going to add them together. It's just going to use whichever one is currently selected in my menu switch. So we've got length and count. We can see the orientation is now correct. Count, length. So I now have a switch to select which type I'd want. And I just want to control for count. So I'll drag out a group from that. Also drag out a group from length. That'll automatically set me up with controls for the length spacing and the count spacing. So to save this out as an asset, I can rename this to collection instancer. I'm just gonna delete the parts that I don't want. I wanna go in here. I can now right click this and mark as asset and I can save this file wherever my Blender asset library lives. If you wanna set this up to work with whatever collection is in your scene, you'll probably want to drag out the collection info to a group, the object info, and in the group, I'm just gonna rename that to collection origin. I can rearrange these. So to save this out with all these settings, you want to set the verts up how you like them. You also want to delete any other collections you were using. So I've deleted the scaffold collection so that when I drag this into a new file, Blender's not tempted to call on that scaffold collection. Clear these fields here, disconnect these, and make sure these are empty. Go into the group settings, make sure collection and collection origin default settings are also empty. So I'll save this out to my asset library. I'll drag that into the tools category I created. I'll save again. And then if I go into a file with a collection that I want to instance, I can now drag this in, select that collection, making sure that this is not part of the collection it's instancing. And I could put an empty in this collection, but I can just as easily select one of the objects in that collection and it'll have the same effect. So you don't have to use an empty, I just like to use one so I can edit it. And there we go, we've got our mesh line, we've got some controls for length count, and we can create whatever we want inside this. So something like this is definitely useful for arraying around a shape, such as in something like this, I have this single screw object and I can just array it around the edge of a plane, or I can put the verts in this object, wherever in this scene I want them to be, to array things like screws or scaffolding or anything like that. So here's the final setup here. You can take a screenshot of this for your reference. And if you want to follow along as I develop this environment and the course that's going to accompany it, do like and subscribe and join the mailing list. And if you want to see a previous video on some other useful geometry nodes tools, then check out this video here.